and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I want to talk about the interaction between two semiconductor materials that lead us to an understanding of a diode. And in particular, I'm going to concentrate on what we refer to as a rectifier diode. That is a diode that transforms alternating current into direct current. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the electronics. I'm basically interested in the interaction between my two semiconductor materials, how that causes electron current to flow in one direction, but not in the other. So if you need to know a little bit more uh, in terms of electronics and the different types of diodes, then that will be maybe a subject of another video. But today I'm going to concentrate particularly on the semiconductors. So here I have two semiconductor materials and the first type I have is an n-type semiconductor. Now as a quick recap, an n-type semiconductor is usually silicon, though germanium could be used, that has been doped with an atom or atoms that have valency electrons such as phosphorus. And in that case what we have is we have a large number of electrons in the conduction band and no holes in the valency band. Over here we have our p-type semiconductor and our p-type semiconductor in this case has been doped with atoms that have three valency electrons, boron being a good example. And the result is, is that we don't have any electrons at all pretty much in the conduction band but we have a surplus of holes in the valency band. So the main charge carrier in the p-type semiconductor are actually the positive holes whereas in the n-type it's the negative electrons. Now what we're interested in is what happens when we put the two together. Now the first thing I want you to understand is of course we have our electrons in our n-type and so I'm going to use four little green circles here that are going to represent electrons in our conduction band and then on the other side we have our holes. So we have holes here in terms of our p-type semiconductors and these holes of course are just the absence of electrons within the molecular bonds between silicons and hence an electron could fill that hole at any point and that is particularly the point. So when we bring these two together what happens is we have a movement of electrons near the junction from the conduction band in the n-type to the valency band of the p-type. Now the first thing you probably think is, is well this has now become neutral but that is not the case. n-type was already neutral and same with p-type it was already neutral because the extra electrons here were due to the five valency atoms and the holes here were due to the three valency atoms. And so what we in end having here is, is now we have lost electrons over here and so what happens is that this area here has become slightly positive on this side. Whereas on the other side, because we now we have a movement of electrons to the other side, this area over here has become slightly negative. And in the process what we've done is, is we've depleted our electrons in the n-type and depleted their holes in the p-type and we have this region that is called the depletion zone. And that's simply because electrons have moved across from the n-type to the p-type. And because now we have clearly a positive region on this side and a negative region on the other side, what we start to develop here is an electric field that goes across that way and across this depletion zone. Now of course we could have more electrons move to the p-type but because of the electric field the electrons don't stop eventually going through there because as this becomes more negative then any electrons in the n-type will less be less likely to move into the p-type and as a result it stops and so the depletion zone only is a very small basically uh, slither uh, between the two. But the important thing is, is that we've set up this electric field. And like I said, this is called the depletion zone because we've depleted the conduction electrons in the n-type and depleted the holes, positive holes in the p-type. So now you get an understanding of what happens here between my n-type and p-type. But now let's explore when we place this 
into an electrical circuit. And what I've done here, as you can see, I've placed this circuit here so that we know that this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal, and we know that in terms of conventionality, we have an electrical current that is able to move from the positive to the negative terminal. So that's the direction of current. But you should also know is that no nothing actually flows in that direction, is that we do have electron flow going in the other way, because conventional current is the opposite direction of the electron flow. Now let's explore what happens with this particular junction here. So what we have here is electrons moving across here. And so we have here a predominant number of electrons coming into the n-type. It's sort of filling, starting to fill in the electrons that we've lost across this zone. But of course, what happens the other way as a result over here, that any holes that are created here are pushed towards the junction over here. So what we're doing is we're moving positive holes towards this depletion zone and we're moving electrons towards this depletion zone. And as a result, if you remember, this was positive. So this is now starting to become less positive and this area was negative and this is starting now to become a little less negative in this region, which means we're weakening the electric field here, which means we can start again having these electrons jump over and fill the holes that have been moving over here. Now, of course, this continually happens. So the net result is that with the provision of holes towards this junction and the, always the provision of electrons coming the other way, this allows current to continue to flow through this particular diode, the fact that with these two semiconductors joined together. So in other words, in this configuration, current continues to flow. But now I have a look in the reverse situation. What we now have here is the opposite. You can see now I have my negative terminal over here and my positive terminal over here. And what we end up is electrons moving this way and they're going to fill any other holes over there. In essence, what they're going to do is they're going to increase the negativity of this p-type over here. What about the holes? Well, of course, if there were any holes, they're going to, in our case, migrate closer to this way. And so therefore going to increase the net positive effect. In other words, what you're doing is strengthening the electric field that is across here by simply by placing this terminal in this configuration. And so in essence, what will happen is because this electric field becomes so strong, the fact is, is that no current will flow. Current will effectively stop. So in other words, in this configuration, this diode actually prevents any current from flowing. So back to our previous diagram, in that configuration, we can have current to continue to flow. But in this configuration, the current does not flow. So what then if we applied an alternating supply? And of course, an alternating supply is that the electrons move backwards and forth as you are aware, is that if I were to look at the current in terms of an alternating supply, you know that you would get the classic sinusoidal wave. But the thing is, what this diode does is this. Anything that's happening in the positive direction, and we'll make the positive direction our first example in that direction, you're going to get a current like so. But of course, when the current changes direction in terms of the alternating supply, you're not going to get anything. So for that part of the cycle, you're going to get a flat line because of the fact that the diode here prevents current flowing. Then the positive part of the circle again, you get another rise, lovely drawn here, but you get the ID. And again, you're going to get a flat section when it goes in the opposite direction. And that cycle repeats itself. But the point here then is, is that you clearly have a current that is only flowing one direction. In this case, what we have in very simplistic forms, we have a DC current or DC. The DC stands for current, of course. Now, technically, this is referred to as a half wave cycle or half wave current because you have is this gap 
over here. And in essence, this half wave type of situation will be a good situation where you may want a, a simple dimmer switch. If you have this situation set up, because the current only flows for a certain amount of time, what you in essence have is let, less, let's say, current going into a light bulb, and therefore it would appear dimmer. And so that would be a very simple way of getting a dimmer switch, though it's clearly only simply a full or a half value. Now, a true rectifier diode is a bit more complex in the fact that you want to create uh, a couple of things. You may want to create a circuit that looks like this so that it has much more current or even a flat line type situation. Now that's much more technical and involves a much more intricate circuit and that's not the subject of this video. But I hope that having gone through this combination of the diode, you have a better understanding of the nature of the two semiconductor materials and how their interaction leads to a property. In a later video, I'm going to investigate what happens when we put not two pieces of semiconductor material, but three in that, that we might put an N-type with a P-type and another N-type together. We could also put a P-type sandwiched with an N-type and another P-type. These examples lead to a transistor. And that will be a subject of a future video and I'll explain how a transistor works in using semiconductor materials. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. I hope that's helped you. Please press the little bell to make sure you get up to date videos. Like and share with your peers. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.